It has been a rocky road for retailers in 2020, at least the ones that don't sell toilet paper. Gap temporarily closing its stores back in March and just a few days later named Sonia Single as their brand new CEO. Since then, the company has made a strong comeback. The stock is up 200 percent. Single recently laid out her three-year vision for the company, focusing on fewer stores, e-commerce, and more casual and athletic wear. And she joins us now for a Closing Bell exclusive interview, her first TV interview since becoming CEO. Sonia, welcome. Good to have you. Thank, thank you. Good to be here. I do, I do want to start with that stock recovery. Uh, the, the stock is up more than 300 percent from the 52-week lows. What, what's the main factor, would you say, driving the turnaround? Uh, you know, I think it's what we articulated to investors last week, uh, f a few weeks ago, which is our power plan 2023. That's grounded in our three big areas of focus. First being the power of our brands. And we have these four purpose-driven, billion-dollar, iconic American brands that have been in business for decades and uh, bring a lot of joy and fuel a lot of uh, inspiration and optimism for what they stand for. So the power of the brands coupled with the power of the portfolio and the fact that our portfolio of these four brands covers about 80% of apparel uh, spending in North America. And so, you know, 80% of what people wear, you know, we've always led with the casualization of the American wardrobe. And for 51 years, that has mm -hmm. been really how we have continued to move the company forward. And so the portfolio and that coverage in a, you know, 200 billion plus industry is a distinct advantage. And then followed by you know, the power of our platform. And that platform grounded in our digital dominance being the second largest e-commerce site for apparel and, and very fast growing, as well as our scaled operations. You know, it's really that trifecta of the power of the brands, the power of the portfolio, the power of the platform that I think has sure. driven a level of clarity for us uh, over the last eight months. And you know, I think when you go through a crisis moment, that's when yeah. things become very, very clear. So, so yeah, Old Navy and Athleta, those, the, that's the bull case. When I talk to investors and, and analysts, that's where the growth is. I know you used to lead Old Navy. Are these growth rates that we're seeing, very strong comps in, in those portions of the business, sustainable? What, what's the runway there? We, we've laid out a multi-year plan that shows that Old Navy and Athleta will represent about 70% of the company's sales by 2023. Right now, it sits at uh, you know about 55 or so. And so we do see continued uh, consistent momentum ahead. And you know, we couldn't be happier about their strong Q3s that we just announced with you know Old Navy seeing a 15% um, growth and Athleta at a 35% growth roughly and the comps being uh, very, very strong. So you know, our, our comparable uh, store sales for the entire company at uh, mm -hmm. plus 5% for Q3 and the fact that we delivered flat sales uh, something I'm really proud of. We have been relentlessly focused on sales growth, you know, underneath the North Star of who we are as a company and what we stand for. And as I shared with you at the earlier, you know, clarity of who we are is something that we spent a lot of time on. What is our purpose as a company? What is our North Star? And I do believe articulating that North Star and, and saying, look, we are inclusive by design. That is what this company is. That's our unique place in the world. And then these four brands that stand for something laddering up to that uh, has been uh, an enabler for us in a, in a pretty compelling way. Well, that, that's sort of where I want to go, which is talking about what you stand for and the whole identity of the Gap brand itself. Because, you know, this is a brand that, that people on Wall Street were, were ready to write obituaries for, you know, before the, this turnaround that you've seen in the stock. It was khakis, it was jeans, it was solid colored t-shirts. I think the Kornacki khakis, our, our colleague over at MSNBC had, had a bit of a moment. But what exactly is the Gap brand standing for right now? Who's that target audience and, and what's the future of it? Yeah, Gap Beyond Steve brand, Kornacki. Yeah, it's a great question. And listen, Gap brand stands for modern American optimism and has done for 51 years since the first store opened. You know, I think what's changed over the, the, that time is the fact that the way we monetize the brand has radically shifted. So we had classically defined ourselves as a mall-based brand. Well, now the majority of our sales for Gap come from e-commerce. Uh, and then we have partnerships 
that we've announced and are growing. We have franchise agreements and we have a very solid outlet, outlet business that's healthy in, in that particular real estate segment. So the way we are bringing the brand to customers is where the customers are today. And you know, our customers, anyone who's an individual that connects with uh, you know, the principles of GAP, whether you're a younger generation that cares about sustainability and you know, quality and enduring style and enduring uh, individuality, that's really what the brand has always stood for. And we're holding ourselves to meet the brand promise in the ways with which our customers shop with us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.